<laughs> oh, that video is so ridiculous. That's what happens when, uh... That's what happens when you produce an anti-drug ad in Los Angeles, huh? Anyone who clicked on this YouTube button has no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, there was like a an anti-drug PSA produced by the LA Sheriff's Office uh, just before I uh, came, on, came on here. BD Tech's a good conversation starter. I'm diving back into Fantasian. I don't remember how far I streamed the very first time I streamed it. Of course, the last time I streamed it, I remember I beat the tree. Did some other things. Um, so, I'm just hoping to, I guess, share more of this game. Mostly, I want to... I want to get to part two. I, uh... Oh, yeah. A god showed up and beat me up. Beat me up real bad. That's right. I did fight a god already. Uh, are you on Mac or Apple TV? Neither. I am on a MacBook. I guess Mac. Org. To answer your question. Uh, Steph has a, has a MacBook that she's letting me borrow. And I'm just... I'm running, like, a video out capturing that. So, Mac is now the world's, like, or this MacBook has become the world's, like, most bizarre game console. A god or the god? A god. Because another one showed up in the middle of that confrontation and intervened for some reason. I still haven't picked up this treasure chest, so that's vexing. Um, but if, you, if you're not familiar with this game, uh, it is, it is a straight up like PlayStation 1 era Final Fantasy type game and it is made by the person who made PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy games. Uh Hironobu Sakaguchi produced the series up until Final Fantasy 10, I think was his last. Uh and then he left another he left Square Enix or Square Soft at the time. Uh did some stuff, founded Mistwalker, a different game publisher. They made some games. And this this is him at his most Final Fantasy, which is great. Uh, but the writing for this game is delightful. Uh, the big visual gimmick about it is that where, whereas games like Final Fantasy VII and VIII used pre-rendered backgrounds that were computer-generated, this uses pre-made backgrounds. These are physical sets that they created and photographed, and then your character runs around on top of them. Uh, so you can see a lot of uh, very charming detail because of that, and, and a lot of, like quirky uh imperfections which i think pair really well with how old final fantasy games used to look so there you go that's my introduction to it uh it's it's charming as heck especially if you like old grpgs i have to remember where to go consult the bartender all right i remember where that is we're off looks very cute yes uh it's got a pretty out there storyline it, it was kind of just starting to congeal when I finished it before. There's a pretty, there was a pretty kind of out of place lore dump at the end of part one, where essentially they blow the, the kind of the sides of the boundaries of the narrative off. For a long time, it's just kind of you trying to figure out who you are and what you're doing. And then they just drop a giant lore bomb about gods and reality and layers of existence or some shit right at the end of Fantasian part one. And then it's like, hi, that's it. Please stay tuned. Part 2 came out, and they patched the game, so... Uh, they said that the Part 2 expansion added 60 hours of playtime unto itself. And the game was already... Like, I, I think I finished Part 1 at, like, 25 hours, so... Uh, the camera moves are jarring. So, that yeah, so what what that is... Is basically, it's camera... Or it's uh, computer interpolated between two photos. So it's, like, algorithmically blurred to create the illusion of, of a transition, but there's a lot of like visual artifacting that happens because of that. Um, it's pretty efficient from a production standpoint. Like you don't have to hand animate the transitions or even film the transitions because that would be uh, a lot of work filming all the camera transitions between all the zones. But if the game does well, that's something that a future game could very conceivably do. And even you even saw that in some old Final Fantasy, uh, the PlayStation 1 games. They would have video transitions between still image pre-rendered sets that the characters would uh, would move between. And then the 3D rendered characters on top would try to perspective match as the video changed under them. My stream does still say I'm playing art, my bad. So I guess what I find really fascinating about this game is that it, it, it's so much the same kind of game, just getting there in a different way. Ah, it's neat. And the battle system's pretty cool too. 
I'll gush about that later. Okay. I'm trying to clickbait my stream a little bit. I'm trying to clickbait my stream a little bit. I'm trying to like... I'm trying to turn on the jets a little bit. I'm getting a little getting a little toasty with it, getting a little flamey with it. Let's see if it works. I mean, this is actually still pretty low grade, but I'm going to start experimenting with that. I'm going to try writing uh, thought-provoking and weird questions in my sub alerts. That's going to be a thing. Yeah, boobs in the thumbnail? Yes! Here come the viewers. Get ready, everybody. Afterburner's on. Exactly. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the G4 revival? Uh, I don't know that I have many. I just hope I just hope it's fun content that people enjoy making and it does well. They make money. That'd be great. Hope Cinematech comes back. I should I should probably like write to them and be like, hey, I can edit something for you. I should pitch them something. I don't think that would ever, like... It's never going to make money, though. That's always going to be, like, a... Like, you, ju you just got to be into it. I think Highlight Reel is the closest show that I can think of. There's so much out there, though. Are there any, like, video game media montage shows where it just mixes together trailers, gameplay clips, commercials, and video game-related media into themed episodes? That's kind of what I'm thinking. And that wouldn't be too hard for me to do. Um, I just don't know if that exists or if it does how popular it is. Because I don't think it would be very. Or maybe it would be. I don't know. Like, I feel like that could go either way. You just have to do the popular thing every all the time. I know what you're talking about. I remember it from League of Legend of Dragoon. Ah. Legend of Dragoon. Yeah, yeah. I remember in a cutscene, the characters would move forward or back in frame. Their model would scale up or down. And in a, in a way, uh, made it look like a camera pull on a green screen. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was like, uh... That was the technological breakthrough. It's weird. Uh, there's... There's clips in MediaTek interviewing the producers of Final Fantasy VII. And they talk about how they, they actually switched to... CD format because they had a technological breakthrough. Um, they wrote an engine that allowed them to stream video under a 3D rendered scene. Um, and it was that tech that led to the construction of uh, Final Fantasy VII and also dictated them being on CD. Uh, and if they didn't figure out how to do that, maybe they would have continued producing it for Nintendo 64. It, I don't know, it's really interesting. Uh, but I, I do love that the technological aspect was the thing that drove the decision that then filtered down into the creative aspect. They hired Gerard the Completionist as a host, and Kid Boga is getting an animated series of his scam baiting. Oh, okay, that's cool. I didn't know about the Kid Boga thing. Well, cool. That's that's some pretty grassroots stuff. Those are those are some pretty feel good hires, you know. JC, hope I'm having a good day. I'm having a good day. Yeah, I got to I got to make an episode of Inside Games today. That's always fun. Uh, sorry, I'm paying attention to story beats. Got to play some Phasmophobia. I'm burning the Midnight Oil. Playing one of the most endearing JRPGs, I think. Now we're gonna get on a boat! Uh, that explains when the pre-rendered backgrounds would start moving and the texture would seem to snap to a different resolution. Yep. Yeah, you would go from rendered video to another still image, and then there was that, like, it would, like, snap into place. Yeah, it's all it's all smoke and mirrors, but it's the best kind. Oh, it didn't. You didn't have a good day, JC. You want to talk about it? You want to vent? Maybe that won't help you feel better. Maybe you just need to get your mind off stuff for a bit. All right, time for a boat. Uh, woke up and realized I was having one of my bad days, but at least I recognized it. That's that's important. Yeah, and it's good that you're giving yourself some amount of credit for that. That's a good thing. 
That's when you know not to make any decisions. Maybe you don't text anybody. It's, it's time for comfy time. I had an epiphany and now I get mental health days. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think I'm still figuring this out, but there is an art to understanding yourself and knowing your limits and and appreciating that as a skill. It's a skill. Like, it's not something you feel through. It's sometimes it's something you have to think through. You have to observe and experiment, communicate with yourself, I mean. So... It's not that shit overall is overall bad, it's just that your mental, mental health is actually in bad shape. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 I think it's like giving yourself space uh, for your, your, your mind and your soul to deal with it naturally, because that can take time and it does need sort of air to breathe. It's definitely possible to be too overloaded and then things just, you know... Things get filed away and they don't get processed. And then it just stacks up and stacks up and stacks up. So, there is definitely an art to uh, keeping everyone happy and healthy. Thanks for the shame here. Uh, when are you going to do media share? I think it's going to be Wednesday. I think I'm going to bite off some time on Wednesday to do media share. Oh yeah, he got Wolf. He got Shadow Wolf. This is our this is our next anime. Say hello everybody. My neighbor's shirtless guy finally got curtains, and so the legend dies. <laughs> as long as you remember, the legend will live. Hmm, why can't the body just fix itself? A uh, friend found out somebody they know. About to lose their leg? Ah, oh, no. Yeah, the body, the body can sometimes fix itself, but uh, sometimes it gets stuck. It's level forty-six, and you're making scrambled eggs. That's that's a very particular kind of mood. They began and ended on the same note, and it just sucks. I... okay. I understand. I mean, I gotta just... sometimes you gotta just, uh... Sometimes I mentally just like, okay, put it on the board. Bad day. But at least it's over now. What? Oh, no. I'm not even gonna say it. Not gonna put the word out there. I'm not gonna jinx it in any, any capacity. But yeah, sounds like it's been a rough one around the block. Sorry to hear that. A couple of people in here have had, had a rough night, actually, so... It's been a gritty evening. It's got a little grit in it. You know when you, like, chew into something and it's not supposed to be gritty, but then there's grit? And it's like... <laughs> and it does the, like, most sickening crackle in between your teeth? And it, it makes you convinced that you're dead. Like, you want to just jump at... You wish your body, like, your bones could fire out like a, like a dancing skeleton and run away. leave the teeth behind yeah pocket sand oh. sand where sand is not supposed to be if you have warning then you can deal with it but if it's just surprise sand oh how is that the worst thing it's just absolutely the worst <laughs> yeah it's the bone zone dance <laughs> exactly that's what it feels like to escape that feeling Hey, please JPEG me. How you doing? Good afternoon. I'm back playing some some deep core classics. Some forgotten gems. Or ignored gems. Say that. Although, uh Ignored with full understanding and empathy of why. Look at that ship! That's a big fantasy ship. Sign up for fantasy, you get your money's worth. 
What's the deal with everyone having a bad day? And I had a good one. Best Far Cry 6 today. Anyway, I complete a game. Any day I complete a game is a good day. That's okay, Ruby. You're just balancing it out. You're you're dragging everyone up, pulling us all out of the gutter. Might have had a bad day, but Ruby Rose closes out Far Cry 6. How was the ending? It's good news right there. Called my shop to get some minor maintenance done, and they quoted me at twice the cost for one of the four things now, so I'm looking for a new shop. Ah, sorry to hear that. Is your card car on rough rough times? Don't tell me your poor car is uh, it's not feeling good. Oh, Herm Dog, thanks for gifting a sub. I really thought you were joking when you say you play these games. It makes total sense that it wasn't a bit. Ah! They're good shit. Well, this one specifically. But... No, what did you What did you think? What do you think I played? I actually play a little bit of everything, but yeah. No, I, I do put in the time. I'm kind of blessed because I can, I can stream it now. Although I guess technically I'd be off the clock now anyway, so... Why is everybody clapping so much? Everyone's so happy about this boat. I guess it's big. It's got video cards on it. These kids are excited. Oh, it needs new brake pads. Okay. Not squeaking yet, but you feel it. It'll change. Steering wheel flush, but like... Dang, you're getting a whole refresh. Your car's, your car's having a spa day. It's a some boat, huh? Wait, hold on. There might be items. Get a load of this boat. I almost gave it almost gave it all up. I was at the end of my rope. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Sleeping on the street. And then I saw that boat. Aw oh, man, I was I was convinced I could go down that ladder. It was so tall, so shiny, and there was this weird weasel thing on it, and it was so beautiful. Alright, I'm getting on board. Is this only playable on iOS? Um, it is an Apple Arcade game. So, anything that supports Apple Arcade, I presume, would then support this. But I really, I have such a poor understanding of the Apple ecosystem. I don't know if that implies it would be compatible with anything else. It could certainly be a, like an iPad game, easily. Okay. My phones and iPads, cool, cool. Three years back or so. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bunster. I think a game like this would absolutely murder if it like could come out on the Switch. Maybe that. Maybe I'm being presumptive. A game like this would reach more people. I don't know if a game like this will ever murder in sales. I guess Dragon Quest does pretty good. By the way, guys, treat express car wash workers with love and respect. They take a lot of shit from Karen, so send love. I try to keep that in mind with any service job these days. I try my best to make things as, like, light and easy <laughs> and respectful and proper as I possibly can. Like, that's something that, that uh, you know, I always want to do anyway. But now there's a there's a pretty pressing need to do it. Late to the stream, what game is this? Uh, this is a new JRPG made for Apple Arcade. It is from the producer of Final Fantasy, like uh, one, uh, the, s the same talent slash lead producer director 
basically made Final Fantasies 1 through 10. Uh, then they kind of departed the series. But that person has combined with Nobuo Uematsu, composer of Final Fantasy up until Final Fantasy 12. So this game is basically the, the dream team that made a lot of the classic Final Fantasy games in a PlayStation 1 scale JRPG. And it's rad. Uh, it is a new PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy game. It's like Final Fantasy 9.5, maybe, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, the visual gimmick is that all the backgrounds are physically are physical sets. They're actually like made with crafts and then photographed. And that's the backdrop for the game. So it's got the music. It's uh, it's actually got some really charming writing. The battle system is got some fun quirks with it that make it much more interesting than just kind of picking stuff from a menu. Pretty smart stuff. It's got a cool looking boat. I want that item? I guess I gotta go through. See so, ya. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it zooms in a little too far. So yeah, the like the isometric view, the the big the big environments that you kind of run around on. It's definitely got that got that PS One vibe. That's why I like it so much. Clearly, cock and balls. Yeah. I mean, what, what explorative ship is not a giant penis? You're piercing the unknown. <laughs> you guys just see what you want to see? <laughs> it's Freud twirling a cigar. Hmm. That's So that's another side effect of the fact that the transitions are sort of uh, algorithmically generated. Is that the, the keyframes get a little wacky sometimes. Like, that kind of does, like, a little S shape. Uh, there's, like, sometimes it'll do, like, a wiggle because it's just, like, it doesn't know how to go between point to point too effectively. The path it takes is a weird curve. There's a princess here. We got princesses, flying boats. Oh yeah, the main character has amnesia, by the way. Let's see. Okay, it does say it. All right, all right. Wait, what? Oh, wrong button. Yeah, that's good stuff. I had that belt from a while ago. I guess I just never equipped it. Oops. I don't... I don't remember there being any kind of, like... Uh, gear enhancement subsystem. Something about selling gear in, a, in an RPG makes me nervous. Yeah, it's, it's Final Fantasy Greatest Hits for sure. Uh, there's other things that... Like, I already did fight a god a little bit. Um, definitely started in the middle of a bunch of bullshit and then just completely switched gears and went to a peaceful city kind of thing. See, yeah, uh, that camera transitions really, wo really wobbly. Like, literally. Like, like, like. This game has that charming PSP vibe of all the walls are made of papercraft painted with matte oils vibe. 
Was that a big thing for PSP? I, I have to admit, I really didn't spend as much time with the PSP as I probably should have, given the caliber of game I enjoy. That and the Vita were kind of just like... Weeb game gold mines. Now it's the Switch, which is great. Yeah, and the camera transitions can make the analog stick a little wacky too. If you don't, like, if you hold the same direction, um, Leo, the main character, keeps running in the same direction. So, like, as long as you're just holding the stick, you won't just careen off into nowhere. But you do have to sort of let it go back to neutral and then push the stick again in the direction now adjusted for the new camera angle, so. Oh yeah, PSP, could you could crack it open like a walnut. I mean, that was that was also kind of what killed it, is my understanding, or at least that's what's commonly said. Like, just, just no software sales. Sell nothing, hoard everything. That's usually how it goes. I This game actually, I recall getting pretty hard. There were a couple of boss fights that actually made me sweat it out. So, actually kind of pushed the amount of items I could buy and trying to swap my gear around and stuff like that. I liked it. It was great. I guess he can play piano. PSP games had lowered resolutions for obvious reasons. So you'd see a lot of wall textures that were simple but had matte pastel colors. They would look soft but still pop. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. I see what you mean. Um. Yeah, that, that like... You can't rely on a on a bright backlight to save you kind of thing. We don't have a whole lot of Oh, yeah, we don't have a lot of uh texture space. Crunchy PS1 uh 3D. Oh god, I just love interiors so much. All the little details are so charming. Tiny little notes on the board. There's like bottles up there that are kind of wobbly. They're tiny, and somebody had to make them, so they're not like perfect, perfectly identical. Looks really good, shame I have a Windows PC. I mean, I do too. I don't expect this is within easy reach of a whole lot of uh, gamer ass gamers, but I think it's worth the reach. I think it's worth the effort. But hopefully, my streaming can. Uh, stream it to more people. More art appreciators. Respecters of the god game that is the introspective JRPG. Is that truly the nerdiest game? The like RPG boss fight think about life and stuff kind of games? Tough to think about. Tough to think about. Kind of must be up there, though. I uh, checked nobody within 75 miles of me rents Apple devices, so <laughs> I'm getting all of this game from your stream. Damn, that sucks. That's a bummer. I would, I would like to think that that kind of service would be more ubiquitous, but I guess not. How much does, like, hmm, I wonder what the minimum device that could run this is. And how much do those go on, like, eBay, I wonder. I think Metal Gear does that uh, too deep for you stuff a little better than the JRPGs that try it. Those games are so far up their own asses. That's true. There is there is something endearingly disarming about Kojima, isn't there? Like it reads it reads pretentious, but also like, but also goofy. So there's a, always a, there's always a sense of humor about it that makes it go down so much easier. Than JRPGs that, yeah, 
try the same thing. Final Fantasy X where you can fight a boss that is named Sin, and it's like the reincarnation of your dad. Yeah. <laughs> You're like abusive absentee father. Became a giant demon called Sin that you can beat up. But the, those overtones, I feel like we're not even really explored. It was just a bunch of weird floaty stuff. Maybe it was what, I, what I've come to think about it as. is like that's sort of the misty haiku that the game sort of presents uh, in a melange of emotions and stuff. <laughs> Ten is a weird duck. But it really resonated with people, or at least the soundtrack did. Kingdom Hearts did too, and it has the same sort of feeling to me. Engage waifu drives, boys! To Xanarkinda is a great track. No argument here. Look at those juicy enemy eyes. You're gonna fall right into them. Smart Babama, I agree. Uematsu is a legend. Uh, his music in this game is fantastic because, I'm going to be honest, stylistically, it's kind of like Final Fantasy. <laughs> like, he, he steered back in that direction. I know he can do so much more than that, and he has done so much more than that. But there's something about the soundtrack because it, it evokes so much of the musical sensibilities of his, like, PS1 era, and even maybe 16-bit era of, of Final Fantasy soundtracks. There's the straightforward kind of heart heart stringy stuff like this. There's also just whack, wacky, like outrageous, proggy, weird synth, funky bass tracks. Anyway, yeah, sorry, JC, I'm repeating myself, aren't I? Valentine, how are you doing? I don't get to watch you live too often because of work. Are you still doing that con continuous stream thing? How did it go? Any no noticeable uptick in viewership slash subs? Uh, no and no. Uh, it turns out that like... It was it was better because I was streaming more. Like I was trying to, trying to put in... A, I put in a couple of 12 hour days. There were some life circumstance things that kind of prevented me from doing much more than that. But, uh, realistically, that's as much as I think I could ever do. So, just merely streaming more was good. Um, but, like, yeah, leaving the stream up with, with randomized media didn't really yield a whole lot of interesting metrics. It didn't really gain new viewers, and it retained a subsection of the people that would watch me when I was live. So, it's it's just a less good version of, the of me being on stream uh, by the numbers of it. So, it tanked my average viewership a little bit. Well, not as bad as I thought, though, so I'll be honest about that, but... It was still fun, I vote for once a year. I think that's ex that's fine. I don't see why not. It's, uh... Purely by the business of it, it, it does a little bit of damage because ad rates are based on average viewership and even even offers and incorporations into programs can be based on average viewership. So it actually does, a pr like it, it, is, it does considerably knock the one metric that matters. But uh, once a year shouldn't be that, shouldn't be that bad. It's not, like, it's not that disastrous. Um, I'm going to get out of the way for the like visual novel part of it. Um, do you ever play party games with chat here? I, Goblin, I have to admit, I, I often do not, really. But, uh, it, I have wanted to do, I just ended up playing single player games a lot. I'm, uh, I am an antisocial gamer. I'll say this, though, Battlefield's coming up, and I'm gonna play with Bruce a ton. And I wouldn't mind throwing open the floodgates there. Yeah, exactly, Smart Bob Bomb. The, uh, the, the Lost Odyssey short stories are here, and in almost exactly the same respect. So, in Lost Odyssey, Whenever Kayam would recover some memory of his past, you get one of these. Similar things happen here, although sometimes they're blends of like current events with unlocked memories. It does a really good job of painting a, a sensory space in the story. 
cool stuff. I think it's cool stuff. Yeah. Those dreams, Borg Ninja, same. I don't think I got through a single one without, like, at least crying a little bit. Uh, like, sometimes I would just be openly sobbing. They were so... so raunchy. I agree. I was... I have such a powerful connection with that game because of those those short story segments. Actually, wait. Sorry. Just one second. Turn off alerts for a little bit. Enter art respected, respecting mode. Yeah. Yeah, we already got a love triangle. Mm -hmm. Sort of, except one of them is amnesiac. It's a love triangle, but one of them forgot their the status of their relationships. Oh, how tragic. How emotionally confused. A smart, uh, same here. I was very glad to, to, to see him play Lost Odyssey. Blue Dragon didn't quite hit me the same way, but then again, I was always more of a Final Fantasy fan than a Dragon Quest one. Because that kind of seemed like it was the idea. Uh, also just it kind of ran weird on a 360. But yeah, I was definitely glad to see Mistwalker making this game instead of, like, I tried playing some of their mobile titles and it just didn't hit like I had hoped it would. So I was very glad to... to see this. And yet again... Slightly saddened because it's uh it's just not that convenient to play for most people. difficult game be played it seems like souls you're supposed to speed run it alt f4 it looks incredibly challenging thought it might be great for your highlights oh hold on a minute that does sound like my kind of game huh okay yeah like a death run game like a, like a really spicy gmod server those are fun it's been a while since I've played something like that. What's your take on this ever-going multi-platform? Uh... I... I don't know how... how, like... I don't... I have no idea. I have no idea what kind of, like, publisher Apple is to work with. Have there been any, like... Apple Arcade exclusive games that have released on other platforms?
Man, it's just such cozy music. The contract says they can't appear on Android or other subscription services, but that leaves some gray area. Oh, okay, smart. You just drop some Googling. The Goog it. Well, Goog. plays on Apple TV, I I imagine it, it would be just fine, right? I think. It's been mentioned that the battle system in this game reminds him of the old Skies of Arcadia game from Dreamcast. People remember that game very fondly. I had it on GameCube and I played it for like 10 hours or so, but I didn't get far enough to, to really understand what made it so so great. But I can see that, yes. Did, I guess did Skies of Arcadia have a lot of like drawing a line through enemy type combat mechanics? Has anyone else been in the unique position of people assuming you were in a love triangle and you weren't? I had to trudge through a drama because people assumed that I had a relationship with a close friend's girlfriend. In reality, we had no such energy with each other and it was really stressful and tense for the three of us. Turned out that it was a fourth person seeding rumors because they didn't like that they were losing attention from my friend. Being young is weird. That is very weird. Huh. Now, I've never been in that position, luckily. And if I if I were, I was intentionally so obtuse about it that it just didn't affect me. I was very socially disconnected uh, in my my youth and teen years. But yeah, even in this setup, honestly, there's a lot of energy of like, what is it? Zidane and Garnet from Nine. A princess who's like, becomes enchanted with a freewheeling roguish thief. I mean, that's also just classic storytelling, really. Yeah, princesses who dream of adventure. I guess that's meant to reflect the, the reader. A lady with a, a heart that yearns for something more. the new Angels and Airwaves album. I haven't. I haven't even listened to the new Limp Bizkit album. I've been listening to a Square Pusher album. It's, uh, I realize it's kind of, uh, kind of lost all the time that I used to listen to music. Um, I used to, uh, I used to listen to music when I would lift weights. Um, now it's pretty much just in the shower. <laughs> I get like 15 minutes, a uh, minutes a day. Usually like 10, so I can listen to like two songs. Kind of sad. I don't commute anymore though. Uh, and now when I work out, I play Ring Fit and stream it usually. At least that's been the ca past couple of days. Oh, this is very sad. Leo never showed up. 
Leo, you cad. About to get a shower speaker? Go for it. It is an investment that I don't regret for a second. I didn't even have to invest in it. It was actually in a goodie bag from VidCon one year. But I use I use it every day. It's great. The best. Yeah. Leo Nobaka. Kick a rock. Oh no, it's starting to rain. Aww. Of course it's raining. Look, she got a little picnic pack. Very cute. Combo is the push I needed to buy a shower speaker. Get a shower speaker, everyone. You won't regret it. Unless it, like, doesn't pair with your phone for some reason, but... You'll never have the best shower is when you're just, like... Full, full chest singing your favorite song. Spitting out soap and stuff. It's great. Yeah. Yes. Snails Snails on a chalkboard, which is a great name. Is correct. Waterproof speakers are the best. Just in general. Angels and Airwaves is my go-to guilty pleasure music. It's so corny and not terribly good. Tom has a rough voice and his lyrics are weird. <laughs> but the positive vibe of the music is so cozy. Everything's Magic is an American version of an anime title theme. I gotta catch up then. This is a wonderful description. You're selling me on this band. One... Fantastically. Is a shower speaker a waterproof speaker? Yeah. Is it better than having a speaker outside of the shower while you're showering? Um, I would say so, yes. But if you already have an outside speaker set up, maybe, maybe you're good enough. But yeah, it's uh, like I clip it to the shower curtain uh, ring. That's got a little button on the side. Kind of nice having a little speaker in there. Gotta, gotta live in 2020. It's Cyberpunk 2077. We can have speakers in our showers now. Bless you. Tiffany sneezed. Ah. Uh, abandoned. Date not kept. <laughs> And that's why. That's why the vibe is weird, okay, dude? Oh, right. There we go. I just bring my Bluetooth speaker into the bathroom and set it on a counter. Ah, Gabby's. Well, if you can't always hear it that well, then. Yeah, maybe it's time to make the jump. They're not that expensive, right? I don't know why I'm here trying to sell waterproof speakers to people. No, I sell G Fuel and I sell investment services. <laughs> Speaking of, I got another hardcore plug for Wealthfront coming. I'm gonna sell out hard tomorrow. You, you better get ready. You better get ready with that investment money, because I got a service for you. You wanna make free money? You want money to just multiply itself for you? I've made $35, and I haven't done anything. I just sat on my ass. Great. What's what's your favorite anime? Ah, oh, sorry, Bunster. Um, I think I've... I, Hajime no Ippo is, like, my my longest-running, like, good time, fun time show. Although, honestly, uh... My Hero Academia is really good, and kind of, kind of has the, like, wholesome vibe down even more. Anyway... Ah, uh, maybe still it though. Maybe still it though. But, uh... Like, the, the one that probably touched me the most, and that I respect the most, is probably Planet Tess. It's one I usually bring up. It's a, it's a really cool, like, near-future science fiction... Like, kind of believable science fiction, kind of more hard sci-fi sort of show. Uh, that follows this, like, cast of characters that are essentially space janitors. They have to pick up orbital debris 
before it collides with other construction or shuttles or something like that. So it's just a procedural that sort of follows this crew and the uh, junk they have to pick up and the various like political drama that that causes. It, it's, it's pretty wild and pretty interesting once it picks up speed. Try listening to Secret Crowds. It's a whole ride. The song has a one and a half minute lead in. The certain lyrics feel like they were written by an anime protagonist sending a love letter. And it's so dorky and saccharine. It'll make you feel like you're 14 and in love with that girl in high school that was out of your league, but she was nice to you. I love it. I, I wouldn't mind feeling that way. So this, these, this is one of the more like esoteric tracks, you know, it's just kind of out there. This is one of the more uh, improvisational like acid jazz tracks. Like, it doesn't make sense, but you start bopping along with it anyway. Bodied by the old man. Oh, Max, thank you for gifting a sub. Gotta focus on the game and chat. Yeah, yeah. Just glad I still get to see your content these days. Well, I'm glad you're watching these days. Quick bedroom dick punch. Yeah, that'll end a fight right quick. Did somebody leave the window open? Cute gloves, though. Those are cute gloves. Yes. Party swells. There was at one point, at one point I knew what that meant, but I don't remember what it means now. Oh well. Don't get bonked, Leo. I think my stats are okay. Yeah, just little things like, just this tiny little cup here. I like this tiny cup. Just, just some good flavor text all around. Anime was never my forte. Never seen Cowboy Bebop, but would definitely like to see it at some point. Yeah, that's... Bebop's a safe wreck. It's like, it's got qualities that just make it a good show. And it's... It's got some of the anime trope stuff in it, but not too much. It's got it's got qualities that outshine that stuff. There are sometimes people that like like shows because they're anime as shit, or some like anime trappings give it a boost, and without that boost, it wouldn't really survive on its own. But Bebop definitely survives on its own. Yeah, De Death Note is a is a show that'll grab people too. I think My Hero Academia would probably be pretty easy to, to get people on board with, especially with like superheroes kind of being the thing. And these xylophones are going at it. That's right. It's... I think all of his abilities are, yeah, straight lines. I get three? No.
See, the soundtrack is just not giving up. It's it's just so crazy to realize that, yeah, actually, the music was really that important. It, it makes what ostensibly is the most boring thing in the world. I mean, the combat is actually really neat. I, I do like the combat a lot. But, like, running around on a world map and, and talking to characters that pop up little boxes of text. There's no way that's exciting, right? I mean, the, the writing is pretty fun, but still, I'm not, I'm not fooling anyone here. That's pretty satisfying, though. But, uh, yeah, the, it, the soundtracks of just old Final Fantasy games do so much lifting in conveying and evoking emotion. Yeah, Go Hello, you're right about that. Space Dandy does hit all the tropey stuff, but mixes it up. It's It was actually a little too good at that, Go Hello, I have to be honest. I, when I first watched Space Dandy, it was so anime at the beginning. I was like, I can't take this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of big, goofy, stupid, titty anime. I can't believe I said that ever to myself, but I did. I was like... I think I, did, I was, like, just watching Keijo 2, and I was like, I can't. This is too much. But, like, I, that, I just kind of bailed out in the first ten minutes. And then, like, the beginning monologue is, is Space Dandy talking about titties and, and butts, and I'm just like, good god, it's just too much. But it's so fucking good. Like, I didn't even ever make it through the, the end of the first episode. Uh, but then I finally did, and it was, like, so amazing. Uh, so I'm, I'm on my way. Ever seen High School DxD? Not yet. Although, I, I have been told it's the trashiest of the trash. That's always fun. Majority Clock, thank you for the sub. What are we playing tonight? This is uh, the rarest PlayStation 1 RPG. The rarest of them all, because it's on Apple Arcade. But it is called Fantasian. It's made by the... By the basically the dream team that made the PlayStation 1 era Final Fantasy games. So, if you liked Final Fantasy 7, 8, or 9, this game might be for you. I'm sure, why not? I dug it, but to get over them front-loading the titty, yeah. It made sense. Like, it wasn't done for no reason. I do like that the, like, Space Galaxy bar, they keep going to boobies. It's so puerile that it, it wraps back around to being charming. But, uh, I just wasn't in the headspace for it when I saw it the first time. I never saw Megas XLR. I remember seeing ads for it. It's like watching an anime Guy Fieri pilot a mech and have sick anime battles. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, you have a salty uh, airship captain. Some good RPG stuff. Look at how cute this interior is! On little dials and brass accents and stuff. I hope that this team can make uh, another game on more platforms. I'm willing to buy a lot of hardware for exclusive games, but a phone isn't one of them. Yeah, I, I understand. I get it. Or even like an iPad or something like that. Um. They do have Lost Odyssey out. It is in ba Xbox backwards compatibility. I don't know if it's part of Game Pass, but you can play it on an Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> I just like saying Xbox. You can play it. Uh, it's, it's available digitally, too. I don't know if detailed minimalism is a term, but that's how this feels, and it's great. That's a really... That's a, That feels like a really accurate term. Because, yes, that's exactly what it is. Like, tons of tiny details, but... Since it is a physical set that they had to build by hand, it can only get so tiny. Because they made it by hand. Are you playing it currently? Uh, I'm using Steph's MacBook with just HDMI out into a capture card. And then I'm playing off the preview window for that capture card. Uh, which is leading to some audio crackling, which I'm not super happy about. It, it tends to come and go, and I just, I just don't know what's doing it. But, um, normally I try to run it through my capture, my actual capture card. But for some reason, it like the pass through HDMI doesn't work. I don't know. I had that issue with the Wii U as well. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, Joe Malik, I'm I'm raiding the girlfriend's t tech to to get to play the games. 
That's the true gamer move. It's getting a partner so that you can play... You can play games on Apple Arcade when you need to. What did he tell me to do? Starboard Deck. I don't know which one that is. Anyone watch me Shishi? I started it. Um, I was not prepared for how, like, mellow is a good word for it. I wasn't prepared for how mellow that game, or that show was. So, I was kind of waiting for things to happen. And I didn't realize it was more of a sit back and let the vibe get to you kind of thing. That's a lot of Japanese horror, though. It's, it's very, very slow creeping dread. But usually once things go to crazy town, they stay there, so... It's, it's like, it's a fair payoff for the wait, but they do like to drag it out a little more. Yeah, the folklore stuff is cool. It feels a little more uh, culturally enriched than maybe your average big titty anime trash. Uh, number one reason. I'm trying to, I'm trying to lay it out here. I'm trying to help my, my fellow gamers. Yeah, stuff like Mushishi is barely horror. That's the other thing too, is uh, I think it was, I think it's, I think it's horror aspects or it's scary aspects were oversold to me. So I had weird expectations going in. It's full tilt mellow and it's one of my very favorites. I actually prefer the dub. Travis Willingham does a great job with Ginko's vibe. Okay. I need to, I need to go back and watch it then. I feel like I'm in a, a way better place to understand and appreciate a show like that. Like, knowing, it, knowing it's just, like, big, big, like, early 80s Kubrick energy is kind of the, the pace of the show. I'm gonna let things linger. Which is actually pretty efficient when it comes to animation. It's almost like the Ghibli way of doing it. Just have these outrageous, outrageously detailed scenes you can slow pan across with some really good environmental audio. It's a cyber snake! Da, 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 da. <laughs> Snake! You have a favorite work by Junji Ito. I have to be honest, I haven't really consumed a whole lot. Uh, sort of, I've read Uzumaki, so I'll just say that. All of Uzumaki. I need to, I need to like, catch up though. There's no reason to not... Not experience all the goodies. Can you analyze more than one thing at once? Oh, okay, it hits the first thing. Ooh, a Mectaria core. Is that important? That seems like an important thing to steal. Oh, you can! Neat! Well, I'm gonna do that from now on. I got clipped here. Yeah, Junji Ito was the this hole is for me guy. Also like the spider shark. Yeah, Silent Hills seemed like it could have been something really special. I have to admit, I'm surprised. Well, I guess, no, well, I guess Del Toro was collaborative in uh, Death Stranding. All right, these protein drinks. Although those are really useful later, like mega useful. is it complete if they don't put in a giant ant lion as a boss? I don't know if the ant lion made it. Uh, I think cures for status effects. Yeah. Okay. Oh shit! Ugh. 
I didn't know she was so low on health. That's alright, I have a Phoenix Feather. Ding! Del Toro's involvement with Death Stranding felt more like a concession after the Silent Hills project fell through. Yeah, maybe. I... I got... yeah... I understand that. I kind of viewed it more as like, they wanted... they were... They had found a good collaborative energy and wanted to do something together. But yeah, it did seem like it was more like a, well... Like that fell through, but maybe we can do this instead. Can't just leave him. Can't leave him on red. Upgraded sync bots from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you mean like what is it? The the Midgar Zolum? That, that big old snake that Sephiroth stabs? I need to. I think I need to start saving my my mana for healing. Yeah, maybe. I do like how it's sort of coiling around in the background. It does kind of look like a moving Final Fantasy sprite. There was something about Final Fantasy pixel art where the characters always looked like they were sort of reclining or floating in air. Chocobo to avoid it? Yeah. Ah, it's gonna laser me again. Okay, so it's weak to holy. So I need to make sure that, uh... Keep attacking. You know, you know, shit's starting to get real in a in a game like this when you have to start using curative items in the middle of the fight. Uh oh, oh man, oh, I came into that in really bad shape. Oh wow, nobody died. I really should have. Is there a way to scan enemies through their health bar? Yeah, there is. Uh, so there's a couple of ways actually. Uh oh, ooh, okay. Um, their their nameplates when you're when you're seeing who you're going to attack will tell you. If it's black and white like that, they're above 50%. I think this is 50% if it's, like, yellow. And then it turns red when it's under 25%, I think. Um, so there's that indicator. But on top of that, there's also an analyzability. Uh, and once you analyze them, then you can see their stuff. I thought there was a way to even look up... I thought there was a way to see uh, information for enemies you've already scanned. Yeah, Libra, basically. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't remember where I saw that. Yeah, this game gets in an awkward spot before you have any abilities that heal the entire party. Oh, you goddamn no! Okay. This is when you have to start, like, dividing up your turns and making sure that you still have turns where you can attack. I played a little bit of Intergrade, uh, Busca. I really liked what I played, but honestly, it was like, it was just more 7 Remake. Fort Condor stuff was pretty fun. I didn't finish it, though. Stop it! Stop healing! I wonder what those jerks were gonna do. bad. Yeah. Slash? 
Oh yeah, I I played a lot of MMOs. I basically like Ultima Online was the first MMO that I was able to play any amount of. Uh, I unfortunately missed EverQuest, but like played a lot of the bigger big ones aside from that. Played a ton of World of Warcraft. Played a lot of Dark Age of Camelot. So yeah, I was pretty into it for a long time. I don't know. I feel like uh, New World came out, and it was like it was like so MMO-y. It was a game that almost seemed to just be an MMO. Uh, and I was just like, ah, I kind of feel like I've played this game enough at this point. That's sort of like running around, doing side quests, having numbers go up experience. You still play SWOTOR? Was that just a short time thing? I love playing it with the with the crew. If, uh, if people want to play it, I'm down. I guess my MMO of choice right now is Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm I'm pretty excited for uh, for Endwalker. You ever played Fallen Earth? Uh, it was a 2009-14 heyday MMO that shut down in 2019. Just opens the servers back up for a classic mode while they work on the newer version with the UE4. No, I'm not familiar with this at all. This is my go-to after I lost my WoW kick? Huh. Oh, I thought I had a pretty good handle on most of the MMOs from that era. I played uh, Lord of the Rings Online a fair amount. Warhammer Online I really liked. Yes. Speaking uh, of 14 and Fantasian, Sakaguchi is playing at Lollafell. Of course he is. Of course he is. Because we understand each other. I can't wait. I can't wait to take my little anime potato through more adventures. I'm the guy that supported the 7 remake so much that I paid for the Ultimate Edition. I usually hate gaming merch that takes up space, but a foot-long plastic motorcycle and an anime boy action figure on my bookshelf is worth showing my support. Willing to take that uh that that ding to the vagina repellents. You're a hero. Uh, I mean, uh, but on that note, yeah, you should play Intergrade if if you like Seven Remake that much or you're that supportive of it. Uh, but yeah, F 14 is getting another expansion. I mean, they basically said they're going to keep making expansions as long as there's an audience. Uh, the next one is going to conclude the storyline that basically started with the 2.0 expansion. So that's really exciting. They're all so scared. Oh, so scared, little guys. Wait, you can shove them around? <laughs> Where are you going? They kind of like skate back to their position. <laughs> anyway, where am I supposed to go? Return to the bridge, okay. I don't think I can do that here. they're going to have a world map, but I really doubt that's going to be possible. That would be something else, wouldn't it? Just seeing everyone on the world map? Huh. I don't think it's necessary. I don't know if it would add too much. I mean, you can kind of see it when you, uh... You kind of see it when you're uh, looking. Like, the world... It's got that stuff in the world map, right? You're fast traveling. Dimension? Yeah. So, here's the idea. Here's the idea behind the Dimension. It's a dimensional dungeon. And you know how in, in JRPGs, typically you walk around, you get in a random encounter. Uh, and it stops the game, and it's really annoying, and people hate them. In this game, all the random encounters get stored in this Dimension. And when it hits 30 enemies, then it caps out, and you have to fight them all at once. Um, but since this game is all about hitting multiple enemies at once. It actually makes uh, fighting tons of enemies all at once way more efficient. And in here, it like it, it makes these, it drops attack up, power-ups, 
Uh, you can hit little notes to get extra turns and other kind of buffs, so... There's a lot of things that, that make this, like, a condensed, uh, time-efficient version of JRPG combat. Yeah, angle of attack matters, and you can, like, spells can curve, uh, so you can try to pick up... Basically, different, different abilities have different properties about where they can be aimed and how. And then, yeah, the, the monster counter's in the upper right there. So you can combine all that with the fact that you can see the turn list in the lower right. <laughs> the wee bowling of JRPGs. Holy crap. Anomalies. I have done so much talking. And in the most elegant Twitch chat I think I've ever seen, you have perfectly encapsulated, <laughs> encapsulated what this game is. Thank you for that. Yes, it is the Wii Bowling of JRPGs. Pick that other one up. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, rather than stopping and fighting every five seconds, we save enemies for one massive fight every ten minutes. That's that's basically how it works. And then like and then typically you get a level up because you get to see the bar like go up a lot. So it's it's way more satisfying all around. You get this massive dump of gold and experience, and then you go back to running around hitting switches, opening chests, having anime boy feelings. So yeah, it's one of those, like, it's an actual well-thought-out evolution while keeping the spirit of the gameplay. It's so smart. Uh, you know, there's a reason I'm dorking out over this game. Yeah. And since you typically level up when you do, like, 30 enemies at a time, you get your health and your mana back. So whenever you go into a dimension fight, you're basically encouraged to just blow all your abilities to kill everything as fast as possible because you're going to level up on the back end anyway. Which makes boss fights way different because suddenly you have to be very mindful of, like, keeping your uh, magic points up, using items, keeping your buffs going. That's another big part of it. Some of these boss fights, you've got to, like, keep buffs and debuffs rolling and trying to plot out the number of turns you've got. Uh... Is, is really, really tough. I don't play JRPGs, but this reminds me of trying to fit as many enemies as possible in Rocket Blast and XCOM. Yeah, trying to find that magic pixel where you blow the legs off another sectoid. We got mini games. I gotta help, help him steer the ship. Reminds me of like that <laughs> having to like boop the buttons in Final Fantasy VII. We all have to do it at the same time. Bong. I love dumb mini games. Yeah. 99 out of 100 nobles were impressed. Like Toontown. I never did, actually. I definitely would have, I think, but for some reason it just wasn't right place, right time, I guess. Stepping out for the night. Alright, Busca. Thanks for hanging out. I always appreciate you in chat. Just give it a try. It's still going? Man, I don't know. Endwalker's coming out. You think you think Two Town Online is better than Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker? Two Town has a re rewritten version. They put all the sex scenes back in. Man, 
mind-blowing graphics. whatever Bible RPG that was. Oh, man. Uh, what was that called? Pilgrim's Progress. I never did. I should play that on stream, huh? Might as well play through it. Yeah! It's anime time! Got two waifus on, waifus on the lap. Kicking it on the airship. what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Oh, they had to take out the mascots. Oh, okay. Wow. So they really just diced all the Disney properties out of Toontown and they're just still operating it? Those are great funhouse videos. Yeah, those were, those were pretty good. Those, those did turn out pretty well. Oh, Big Freckle. Mm, your grandma's a big fan. Well, hello, Big Fre Big Freckle's grandma. I appreciate your fan. Just sitting here tapping buttons. But you know what? I'm really good at it. Oh, the mascots that walked around with voice lines. The pictures and stuff are still there. Really? Oh, mascots weren't that big of a factor in the game anyway. That is remarkably chill for Disney. Excuse me, sir. Can you read all the dialogue, please? That's true. I was looking away while I went through some, some speech bubbles. You're right about that. You caught, you caught me not looking. To be fair. Now, say this in my, in my defense. I have, uh, I have played this part of the game before. It was a while ago, but I did. I finished part one. I did, I did, I swear. We do the voices for each character. Ah, I've tried that. I don't think it goes super well. I want the immersion. So, uh, I've tried it, and it can be fun, but it is exhausting. It is exhausting to do multiple voices for hours. Uh, so, also, it's the end of the day, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty groovy. It's getting pretty late. So. It's fun, it's fun to, yeah, save that for the Doom novel. Yes, that is, that's where all the voices go now. And that's way easier to do. Yeah, remember to try to read all the voices in Disco Elysium? Goodness. That was very intimidating. French accents, yeah. I'll do the, uh... I feel like I would... If I would go into it, it'd be the Hank Azaria method of, of voice acting, where you, like, try to do a voice, and it's, like, a really bad version of a French accent, but then that can become its own character if you noodle with it a little bit. Concert? Like a sweet anime concert? Oh man. Disney has been insanely chilled for Disney on all the old Disney game private servers, which was which is a, appalling. Wait, what? Cartoon Network shut down one of the old private versions of Fusion Fall, their older MMO, because they were doing a complete rework on the game. Is appalling the word you meant to use? That seems like a good thing, right? What is the most underrated JRPG? Um, I would I would probably say Lost Odyssey, but that's only because I haven't finished this one. This feels so classic PS One Final Fantasy. It does, right? 
it's, it's, it's so much that in all the right ways. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. It's even got the font. That's a pleasing font. Why can't Square have a font like this in the remakes they're doing for the 16-bit Final Fantasies? It makes no damn sense. Oh wait, this is the- I can't miss the concert, I hear it! There's anime music- ah, damn. <laughs> Font's just not in the budget. <laughs> Sorry. No font budget. Spent it all last quarter. Where were you going? Where are you? Oh. I'll show you all to the hall. Hey, are we gonna dance? Is it time for that? Oh, there you are. One of the best MMOs ever made was Pirates of the Caribbean Online. Huh. People, people talk about that game very fondly. Have you ever heard of pa Oh, Papa LaCroix? That was a PSP game, right? I kind of remember that. And Neopets? That's when shit got real on the internet. Ready for snowboarding in Big Bear this winter? I, I am not good at snowboarding. I'm actually a better skier. Maybe. I did just book a... Uh, Steph and I are going to go on a bit of a trip in wine country. So we're going to do some bougie Californian shit. I'm excited for that. This is going to be a Final Fantasy VIII Eyes on Me moment. I, I seem to remember it might have been. Maybe... This fiery princess is going to going to tame me. Pirates of the Caribbean Online has a private server too. I went on a crazy MMO trip during quarantine. Oh, that that sounds like a cool idea. Just going around digging up a bunch of old MMOs and kind of doing the, the like, I don't know, 1 to 50 level experience. It's cool that all that stuff is still being maintained and, and kept alive by the community. Was a, there was a game that was basically a very early, kind of prototypical version of Elite Dangerous called Earth and Beyond that I was just in love with. It was one of the last games that Westwood Studios made, I think? Wine Country, you should stop by and crash at my dad's house. You won't know who you are or why you're there, but swing by! To be staring into the window, fogging up the glass. Kind of blows my mind. Matrix Online is considered canon by the Wachowskis. An, MM an MMO that no longer exists still has consequences today. Maybe. I mean, it remains to be seen what, what the new Matrix movie is going to do. Alright. That actually seems like something you'd be interested to play again. It might be, yeah. Maybe when the movie comes out. I want to play Path of Neo again. I don't want to play Under the Matrix again. There's a, there's a concert on. 
This is rude. That was weird. Oh, I guess that's how you get out of it. Okay. that was it. That was the eyes on me moment. I actually don't remember... Uh, I don't remember any of the relationships turning overtly romantic. They're all kind of pretty largely trying to figure their shit out over the course of the game that I played so far. That was a weird way to say that. Yeah, Frobot, I'm, I'm gonna linger in this room a little bit and get more of this track. For me to share, gonna show you some Junko Yagami. Please do. I look forward to expanding my horizons. But Penguin private servers make all kinds of fresh content for the game. Me being a 22-year-old adult still playing Club Penguin when a new update comes out feels weird, but then I go in, into their Discord and everyone is mostly adults. Going back to another nostalgic days. Yeah! There are people who still play new Doom levels. I don't see how it's any different. Yeah, that is a really beautiful voice. to go to the captain's room? Yeah. Played Roblox in 2008. Not a single kid at my school played it. So I felt so alone. This thing would be one of the most popular children's MMOs warms my heart, not gonna lie. That's a weird, that's a weird sensation, right? When something you were so super into blows up. I never put any time in Roblox either. Never been into JRPGs, but watching them on stream is really relaxing for me. Never been into Twitch either. This was the bridge I might have needed to be able to discuss with my friend groups that are crazy into JRPGs. Yeah, maybe. You can pick up a bunch of talking points from this chat. have to go across the deck to get to captain's quarters, right? Yeah, it's down here. Ugh. Random deck fish. We've all been there. I think it's down here. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. These aren't captain's quarters. Crap! I don't know where they are. 
Save? I think I saved fairly recently, but... Never a bad idea. Oh, I bet it's that. Roblox game creators make some serious money, too. Uh, yeah. No, that, that game has, has propelled itself into, like, world-class revenue status. It is, it is a phenomenon. Wait, he's in the engine room. I gotta go all the way back? Come on. Blech. I was right there, too. I was wondering, like... Not the captain's room? Oh, there we go. Oh, what a mystical adventure we are on, huh? Huh? Look at this magic boat. Beat up a techno snake. Got to listen to a nice song. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is the eyes on me moment. I was premature. I knew it was around here somewhere. solid and like some tasty drum licks behind this it's like real groovy drum lines oh vents 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 mm. here comes the trumpet I think yeah that's gotta be a trumpet fight Genova. The Dragon Ball RPGs on Roblox are so fun. I find myself hopping back in it every now and again. One of them is a class-based open-world MMO that goes interplanetary. It has such a cool combat system. Can't really fathom what Roblox has become. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that that's what Roblox was either. Jeez. It's like a game creator kit, basically. Steal from the fish. Steal from fish. <laughs> I think her, yeah, research can pierce. There's an RTS on Roblox. Cool. Some of the Roblox games these days have insane graphics. There's a Tarkov ripoff that's really fun that has some gorgeous graphics huh so can you add your own you can add your own uh assets to roblox your own visuals and stuff oh that's kind of cool can you earn your own revenue through roblox
Oh, you can earn insane amounts of money through Roblox? Okay. So it is, it is also like a monetization platform. And it also shares those those tools with its audience. Like Lego, but not for legal reasons. <laughs> Alright, let's get in here. There's probably a giant octopus down there or something. Been here a million times before. Yeah, there's your problem. Got a giant octopus in the engine room. I gotta beat it up for ya. I'm playing this on PC. I'm not. Uh, it's HDMI out from a MacBook. I'm cheating, Jeff. You can make mul or you can make money from multiple games with in-game transactions with Robux and the like. Okay, interesting. Thanks for catching me up. I mean, really, I ought to just install it and scope it out and see what the score is. Good, I was trying to steal one of those earlier. Now I can see what they do. I think it might be for crafting? Do you really think I'd like Toontown? Yeah? Actually, uh, my girlfriend used to work on Toontown, so... Not only am I borrowing her MacBook to play Fantasian, but... She can also, I guess, she's got ins, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Need to ask her to, to make to like get me a bunch of what are they like gears, right? What's the currency of Toontown? Town anyway? She's gonna get me a million of whatever it is. Yeah, she worked on two. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me let me go ask and make sure my my speakers were on this whole time. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, yes. Um, I mean, I didn't remember her title. Like, I wanted to make sure I was I was respecting the work she did. So she was an associate producer on Toontown. Um, she was kind of on the publisher and PR side of it. So as she said, whenever they added new content to the catalog in the game, she would coordinate with developers uh, uh, to kind of like get them out in front and, and get information out about what content was added. So uh, she was a co coordinator between developers and uh, marketing for content that they made. So that's what she did. Associate producer for Toontown. There's a reason Seth is the coolest person on the planet. Do you think I was just making it up? Oh, that's right, I forgot to look what a Mecteria core does. Uh, can at some point we hear more from her about this because it's just so fucking cool, man. I agree it's fucking cool. I've been trying to get Steph on stream for a while now. Um, and she seems open to the idea, it's just a couple of things have come up whenever I try to, to get it done, but I've set up, like, I've set up another mic and we should be... It's something we should be able to do. Um, so it's, it's something I've been I've been trying to suggest. So yeah, I would love I would love y'all to uh, to get to know Steph on a deeper basis because she's wonderful. She's good people. 
And she's done a lot of good, a lot of hard work on a lot of products that, uh, a lot of games and stuff that people super like. She's worked on Guitar Hero. She uh, worked on like the biggest stuff. She's video game royalty, you guys. I don't know if you knew that. Stuff should be a sub goal. Not a bad idea, actually. Further monetize stuff. I mean, stuff likes money a lot. Sometimes I feel like, uh, as a stream team, we would be we would be great because Steph would have zero compunction, working people up into a frenzy to give, well, us technically give me or slash us money. She'd be such a good like sub hype driver. I'm just here to game. Steph Steph would bring like in the furious intensity. You guys think you sub to me now, but you don't you don't even think you don't actually. When Steph gets a hold of you guys, you'll be so entertained. You'll be you'll be throwing out subs left and right here. Uh, I guess I am simping. It's true. You brought a crunchy ice machine for Steph in like ten minutes. That's true. You guys absolutely did do that. And she has used it and loved it. So thank y'all for that, by the way. I can't believe Steph is the coolest person we pseudo know from Lawrence's perspective. Didn't know that? It's true. Ooh, go hello. Thank you for the prime. I mean, feel free to feel free to throw around subs if you want. Just rest assured that it's something I'm already trying to get get going. Cause yeah, I think she I think she'd really like it. I think she'd have a good time, and I think y'all would, would. Anyone would really benefit from knowing her better. Yeah, it lasted seconds. It was really fast. I think we'll see more of Steph on stream. I mean, I, I I can't speak for her. Um, she recently got a flu shot, so she's been feeling a little icky because of that. But it's something that I've I've wanted to do, and she seems open to the idea. So usually that's when things happen. There's a lot of YouTubers that look into Toontown's development history. Interesting. Maybe we can maybe we can feed the YouTube ecosystem. Say some random thing in, on the stream that turns into a YouTube video that gets four hundred thousand views or something. Steph new car fundraiser, man. Maybe, uh, God. I'm sure she would. There's a part of her that wouldn't want to do that. Of me, like, put up sub goals to buy her stuff. But there's very much a part of her that would want to do that. I'll let I'll let her run away with that. The stuff needed new cars. Everything okay? Everything's fine. Uh, her current her current car is just fine. That came out of nowhere in, in chat. That's all. And it just made me wonder. It made me wonder what would happen in that situation. Step private jet fundraiser, yeah. I gotta buy my girl a charter jet. We need people to sub. <laughs> you seem like the kind of person to have a fully riced out uh, AE 86 Ahachi Roku. Drive it around in a slick trench coat and sunglasses all day. Delivering tofu. I never had a drifty car. And I mean, that car specifically always had the weeaboo tax on it, right? But yeah, I am that kind of guy. I do like driving a lot. I did have a stick shift Golf GTI that was really, really fun to drive. And right now I have an electric motorcycle that's really, really fun to drive. So, also very dangerous. So, uh, Steph Yacht Fundraiser? Yeah, I could do that. You could do that, really. I never want to monetize Steph, but I'm sure she will mo 
I think she will monetize herself very effectively. Uh, what motorcycle is it? It is a Zero SR motorcycle. Zero is a, a California based electric motorcycle manufacturer. I actually have a dealership in Hollywood, so I got really lucky. I could just buy it here. Ah, uh, I didn't mean to do that. But it is it is just wonderful for getting around Los Angeles. Because you can lane split here. I charge it at night. Also, I, I mean to I've been meaning to look into this. I think having an electric vehicle qualifies me for a different kind of uh, electric plan. Why was that ladder over there? There must be treasure down there. I'm going to get an electric scooter, but Fresno doesn't have great roads and it isn't zoned well for that sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, two, uh, two wheeled vehicles can be a little sketchy if the roads aren't, aren't even and predictable. just get. Ooh. Can we get a quick random gaming story from her tonight that ends in a cliffhanger? Hmm. I don't know. Well, I'll say this, Shadow. The stream is on in the other room and Seth can see it. So... If she comes over here, if she sees that and decides to come over here, then maybe. But this is this is my machinations was like that we were gonna play uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology games together. We can still do this, and, we, and I, I still want to. I said hi, Steph. I didn't know if she was. Oh wait, wait, she's not. Okay, you're just trying to talk to her in the other room. Um. So, the good thing about those games is there's some downtime while you're hunting around rooms for, like, switches and, and lights and stuff. And I figured that would be when... That would be when Steph could tell stories. And you guys could throw subs at her so that we buy her luxury, uh, luxury consumer goods. Use a heal stone. This is your dealership an hour away from me. That's a pog and a half. I recommend it. They they treated me super well. Uh, and I mean this is maybe down to the local dealership, but the people I bought the bike from were real chill. They they negotiated with me on a couple things uh, when it came to payment. Um, Seth did launch Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, she was a contractor at Insomniac. And we actually met when she was uh, working on Sunset Overdrive, and she launched it with the Xbox One. I just used a heal stone, darn it. Uh, thank you for the one to stream. I have to go to the doctor in the morning and resign from my job. Ooh! Big day! I'm really happy for you. Congratulations on the, uh, a better job offer. And I hope tomorrow goes really smoothly. Maybe they'll offer you tons and tons of money to stay. And you won't have to listen to people complaining about ranch anymore. Maybe, hopefully. Anyway, hope your day goes well. Sleep, sleep well. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Let's see. There's G. Farewell to Ranch Nightmares.
That would be a good starter buck. I was thinking getting some uh, Rebel 250Us. I don't know that uh, I'm not really qualified, I think, to recommend bikes to anybody. I just thought an electric bike was cyberpunk as shit, so I wanted in. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of went from there. I wanted to get an electric vehicle. I knew that to begin with. And uh, up until that point, I had been using an electric bicycle. Although the like the throttle busted on it, so I just knocked the, knocked the motor off. And then used it like a bicycle. So... I was at least somewhat, uh... I had, I had the fear of God in me already, which I think was a good place to start. You gotta be terrified for your mortality when you're on a, on a motorcycle. Have you seen the one wheels? Gonna get one. What? No, I'm not familiar. Is it like a... I think maybe I have seen it. It's like those little... Unicycle, electric unicycles you stand on, basically. Gotta be a way to get on. Uh, there we go. Satisfying. like a skateboard? Okay. It's hoverboard, but it's only one wheel. I have seen those. I've seen people wearing those. Or using them, I should say. Ooh, Ruby Rose. Winning a real trading card. Delightful. Alright, one second. Yeah, let's get you a card. Here is the bag of cards. Ooh, appropriately intense music, too. All right, Ruby, thank you very much for watching. It's always good to have you around. Now, we get a physical collectible. Valued at over $35 million. Here is your card. Wham. What is this? Ooh, a Zatanna card. That was very shoddily cut out of some thick cardboard. This may have been like a... Feels like it may have been like a cereal box or something. Got some, got some text on the back there for you. This is number 110. From the Great Heroes line. By day, Zatanna is a famous stage magician. But when evil strikes, she performs feats of true magic as a force for good. By pronouncing each word of her spells backwards, Zatanna can make nearly anything happen, warping reality to fight the mystic forces of chaos. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there's, there's like, you can see a very small amount of like a, a dotted line indicating where you were supposed to cut it out, I guess. I don't know what I cut it from. Are there any Sonic cards in the deck? I actually don't think so. And that's sad. I don't know why there would be. Because a lot of them are from Nintendo Power Magazine and that's not gonna be Sonic. Uh, all right, let me take this down here. Congratulations, Ruby, on your Zatanna card. And thank you for being part of the stream. What was that? A little fishy. That's no problem. Oh, there's a lot of fishy. Yeah, unfortunately, it was it was before the era of Sonic, Mario and Sonic, the Olympic Games.
is a lot of fish. <laughs> I don't remember a Nanovore by any chance. Can't say that I'm familiar with it. Resisted Sonic X trading cards, believe it or not. No, I believe it. That was the one with, like, the real-life thing. Like, or a real-life kid got warped into Sonic Dimension. It was an Isekai for Sonic. Oh, the kid had such a cool name, too. Like, Jerry Thorngood or something like that. Radson Blastwell, something like that. Sonic got warped into real-life dimension. Oh, I have it backwards. I thought a kid- I thought a normal, unassuming kid got warped into Sonic dimension. There it is. Thank you, Buncer. Chris Thorndike. That's a sick name. That's a totally rad name. Chris. Chris Thorndike. Sonic's my best friend. Sonic is real and strong. <laughs> Man. That was a good meme from the Obama years. Geodude is real and strong. He's my friend. Sonic kicks back at my house, yeah. It's an LCD sound system track. Sonic is kicking it at my house. My house. Hanging out with Sonic. Sonic and I are gonna hang out and tickle each other's feet a little bit. You know, just Sonic stuff. It's Friday night. We got, we picked up a little Caesar's hot and ready. You've been playing Final Fantasy X on Switch and that holds up. Yeah? I have disjointed memories of Final Fantasy X. So... That, the Switch is a good fit for uh, an RPG like that, though. Did a Zodiac Age come out on Switch? Final Fantasy XII? That'd be real solid. I've been meaning to replay through 12. Especially since they did the re-release. Oh, it did! Ah! Oh. Yeah, just, just hedgehogging. Keep giving up on 12 partway through. It's, it's, yeah, it's a slow burn. It's not a very sexy story. Very kind of reserved intellectual one. It's the BBC of Final Fantasy games. What does that mean? I don't know that I like this mode change business. Like they're all they're all wiggling faster now. Sonic have toes? I'm ready to confirm that Sonic has toes. What else are you going to tickle? If there's no little piggies, what else are you going to do? Yeah, if Mario has nipples, then Sonic has toes. And that's just how it's going to be. Yeah, Toes not an unreal scam where you tickle him. Yeah, Sonic Dreams. Man, that was great. Sonic Dreams is a is top ten video game. I got fourteen potions. Holy moly! I guess 50 fish got into the goddamn furnace. That's why this ship's about to blow up. Yeah, Virch Chino. Sonic's... 
relentless endurance is an interesting topic. What is it about Sonic? Why are we cursed with Sonic? And by curse, I mean blessed, but also cursed. About to speed two right into vents. Yeah, Ver, I don't get it either. Um, I mean, they they usually have some pretty great soundtracks, and there's just something about that mascot that has an enduring quality. Hey, what's up, Soul? Good to see you. Seasick. I gotta, I gotta get more Sonic games under my belt, though. I have, I have completed an embarrassingly low number of Sonics. I have finished Sonic 06. So feel good about that. I finished Sonic Mania. I think that might be it. I don't know that I ever actually finished like Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. I know I didn't ever finish Sonic 1. I remember getting to the end of Sonic 2, but I don't think I could beat Mecha Sonic or whatever the hell. When I was a, a gamer tot. And beyond that, I think I may... Mm, no, I don't think I finished Sonic Adventure 1 or 2. 2 is, two is just such a beautiful game. So much ska. So much beautiful, beautiful ska. Sonic Generations is really good. Yeah, I haven't played that one. Everyone seems to agree Generations is solid. Everyone likes colors, it seems. Yeah, the Chow Garden. I remember that. That was in one, too, right? You would raise the Chow on your little VMU? <laughs> Pink is definitely your color. Well, thank you. I've s I'm starting to see the barest, minimalist shadow of a result from some of the diet dieting I've been doing, so... A little more comfortable wearing brighter colors. current desktop background is a chow garden loop through wallpaper engine. Plays the music and everything. I love it. Oh, that sounds so cozy. Well, I want to see this boat come in. I'm not going to stream for too much longer here, but this is a very exciting and intense action-packed moment. All these people are going to get hit by a boat. Yeah, Sega should make a Chow Garden app. What's that all about? Imagine Pokemon Go Chow Garden game. I'm imagining it. It's beautiful. I'd spend money on it. Personal favorite is Spring Yard Zone. All right. I like Flying Battery Zone Act 2, or Zone 2, whatever. Two. Are they an axe? God, I can't remember. Stage? Art? Movement 2. Studiopolis is really good, yeah. Why is no one hauling ass out of that dock? They're low. Yeah, there we go. Or they're slow, excuse me. Like every fail video, there's like a monstrous wave. And it's only long past you could ever 
outrun it by foot do people start moving. And then they get all swashed around like little hams. Little waterborne hams flopping around. He's good in a pinch. Oh, that's right. Little Deus Ex moment. It's really only available on the Apple market. Yes, unfortunately it is. Hopefully that won't be the case forever. Yep. Anime saves the day yet again. This is the second such appearance of this mysterious goddess. And she's gone. She become a god lady like Terra? Yeah, I guess there is some crossover there, huh? She does have magical ability, and that is kind of weird in this world, so I think there's there's a bit of crossover there. She's not nearly as like depressed. As Terra, though. Which, not to say that Terra didn't have reason to be, but... I guess she didn't have the whole, like, indoctrinated weapon of war phase of her life yet. that it even shows you a little icon if you uh, analyze them already. See, there's a little, there's a little spyglass around them now. The thing is, I swear there was a way to like look up their info, to, like bring up an info pane about about the enemies on the screen. If I just, oh, there it is, enemy info X. There we are. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You can look at it whenever you want, see what they drop, what items they hold, what they're weak to, most importantly. Elemental weakness and, and that whole thing becomes way, way important later. There's always ladies to fangirl, or tall ladies to fangirl over if you know where to look. I don't remember if this game steps on the gas when it comes to like femme fatale characters. There is like a Team Rocket lady who's kind of tall and I guess a little cute. Oh, how did you end up going to Hollywood Horror Nights? Uh, or I did, yeah, Joe. Went to Hollywood Horror Nights with some good friends. Even got to meet a new friend this year. That's always exciting. Uh, and it went really well. I had a great time. Lines were all pretty manageable. Uh, I mean, we got the, like, fast pass thing. But, man, it's so worth it. It is, it is impressive how many people they can move through those mazes and still provide a pretty good experience to everybody. Um, but, yeah, the lines were pretty short. Waited like 20 minutes max. Got to see a Jabberwocky show, which is always cool. I always want to do that, but not everyone's usually down for it, so I don't push it too much, but more people were on board than not, so got to pick that up. That was cool. <laughs> and the mazes were really good, most of them. Um, there was like a, I guess a, like an exotic, the Pandora's box one was a little confusing because it was kind of loose in its theming, I guess. But, uh, Oh, these things. I think these are like bombs. I think they explode? I can't quite remember. We had a good time. I ate a crusty burger. Grand Chaos Wolves Ass. Oh, I can hit them all? I, it was like, ooh, look at that! Satisfying damage. Yeah, I know it's expensive doing that with the pro pass, but man, I feel like if you're in, if you're in like a normal pass line, 
I don't even know if you can see all the mazes in one go, because some of those lines are like an hour and a half long. Yeah, Scrap Forever. I, I'm talking about ho Hollywood Horror Nights. It's, it's fun. They always play this like outrageous industrial horror dark core music at the entrance. But these like giant like flame pyro pots going off. So dull. I love them. Yeah, the Skelly Boys in Cages are pretty cool. I didn't have a problem with it. That Just out, out of all of them, that might might have been one of the weaker ones. Uh, Exorcist was a little, like... It was really cool. I like the, uh... I like the Barfin Lady, because of course I'm going to. Oh! That's what they do. Okay. Um... Ah, shit. Uh, the Halloween 4 one was dope. I was super into it. And, like, ended in a hallway of mirrors, which was really neat. I don't, like, I I don't know that I, uh... The Purge Terra Tram was, was cool. It was fun. Got to take a photo with, uh, Norman Bates. Uh, but I think I liked the Freddy's, uh, from 2019 a little bit more. That was... That was dumber. Feels, feels weird having you respond to the chat live after watching you so long on other platforms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a totally different... Totally different environment, isn't it? Didn't know, uh, you streamed until recently. Glad I hopped in here when I did. Gonna have to figure out how to get desktop notifications when you start streaming so I can come in here more often. Well, there's email notifications. There's, uh... There's Discord notifications. I send out a Discord notification whenever I stream, so... I don't know if you use Discord a lot, or if you want to join another server for that, but... That's there. I am not paying attention. If that thing blows up, I'm, I might be screwed. Oh my gosh, stop it. Okay. Uh... It's not low on life, either. Ah, crap. I have to use the next two turns to heal. And then they're gonna get, like, four turns on me. That wasn't, that wasn't so bad. I thought that did more damage. Ah, oh, they're already calling another one. Yes, yeah, like they start putting the screws in. It starts hurting. Oh, they're not dead. There, jeez. Twitch not mobile notifications are reliable if you just uncheck the bell on channels you don't care to get pinged about. Yeah, that's my experience too. I had to like, take the time to actually turn off the notifications for the channels that are, that either go live all the time or the ones that are like, maybe a bit lower on my like, watching priority queue, you know what I mean? So. But yeah, I've, I've not, not had too much of a problem getting uh, uh, accurate notifications. But it does take some curation. Man, that was a way harder fight than I thought. Oh, you got... You cheesed up your Mac, Carbon? Nice job. Gamer, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're enjoying the soundtrack. Because that is that is a significant portion of what makes this game interesting and unique. I think the soundtrack is is quite good. Hold on, I gotta save again. I want I was gonna I was gonna hang it up after the boat ran ran aground, but now we're in this nightmare dimension and how am I gonna stop? How can I stop now? I wanna see what's going on at the end of this dock. I wanna see if my girl's okay. Kina? Yeah, Kina. The Bishonen God back? Yes. Eight abs.
junkyard's been welded to her head now. Can't steal it. Vincent Seventine. <laughs> exactly. Give it more arms and more abs. Also, you know you're a rad Final Fantasy villain if you float. Is that thing gonna get used as a mind control device? I mean, I guess, yeah, it's Final Fantasy VI did have mind control, like, tiaras and circlets, right? I don't think it does in this game, though. It's not... It's not that much of it aping its own its own background. Peace. Yeah, Mecteria. It's not quite like Materia. <laughs> it is sort of uh, connected to something that is sapping away natural life force, though. It is that. It is sort of the spreading, corrupted junk um, in this world. It's just like some trans-dimensional shit that like sucks the life out of the earth. And it's sort of crawling across the landscape in this fictional world. But nobody knows where it comes from and it kills people. Okay. Ratchet the tensions back down a little bit. Kina's eyebrows are still, or eyelashes are still on point. And since I'm, since I'm kind of cruising to the end of the stream here, now's a good time to mention my sponsor. If you, if you want your finances to be on point, like Kina's eyelashes, then you should take a look at Wealthfront. They're sponsoring the stream this month. Kind of checking things out, seeing what the response is like, but uh, it is a robo-investing service. They use algorithms to invest your money in the kinds of market opportunities that are in bounds with your risk tolerance and your return expectation. So basically you set the parameters, you give it the money, and it makes the money for you. Pretty cool. So I'm going to have a chonkier ad read for that tomorrow, I think. Uh, like a full-on ad sponsorship, but please feel free to check it out if you've ever uh, if you've ever wondered about how to get started investing or how to start building wealth. Um, I'm at the age where I gotta start thinking about retirement someday, or at least like, I don't know. Having something where in late in life, if I have to afford medical expenses, I can. That's kind of where my head's at. I need, a, I need a cushion to fall back on if any part of my body decides to give it up. I gotta keep gaming, you know? I need gaming insurance. That's where my head's at. Or if you love wealth, check out Wealthfront. If you love management, check out Wealthfront. Uh, they categorized, categorized me as being, you know, I think I was a 7.5 out of 10 for their risk scale. Uh, and then I picked the socially conscious investment plan. So with those two things combined, now it's just investing me in ETFs and stuff. As much as I want to stay till the end of the amazing stream, I should take my mac and cheese or eat my mac and cheese and go to bed thank you lawrence for such an awesome night and thank you to everyone watching for being fucking awesome uh good night guys well good night carbon thank you for watching i'm not gonna be going for too much longer so don't worry about missing out on a ton next save point i think i'm gonna hang it up but i do enjoy this game a lot however tomorrow is call of duty vanguard time so i'm gonna dive into the campaign for that there's gonna be a lot of screaming there's gonna be a lot of explosions there's gonna be a lot of i think like like camera looking up overhead panning shots of planes flying by at low altitude. Get to point alpha! Stuff a lot of that. I can't wait. Does scoring high on the risk scale mean you're risky or you manage risk well? Uh, it means you're tolerant of risk. Um, it basically asks you some behavioral questions. Uh, as an example, it's like, let's say an investment you have loses 10% in a day. What do you do? Do you sell half of it? Do you keep it all? Do you buy more? Um, so it's, and it's pretty clear about like, you know, just go with your gut. However you feel, whatever your reaction is um, to these hypothetical situations. And that's kind of how it creates a profile for you. 
feel like I often see you play games I've never even heard of. It's very interesting to watch. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Ver. That is that is sort of the style of my stream. It is it is like intense variety to the point where I, I do hope that people are seeing things they don't normally see. Uh but I try to I gotta keep a bit of a mix. Um some of my favorite streamers do show me games that I've never seen before, so I try to uh sort of do the same because of those those are the streams that I like watching. I was going to ask if you were going to play Vanguard. I watched a few minutes of another streamer before your stream caught my eye. They weren't appreciating the story. My computer definitely can't run it. I can't necessarily afford the time being, so I'd love to watch you go through it. Yeah. I'm going to start tomorrow around noon. I'm going to get a bit of a workout in. I've been doing my ring fits in the morning, but uh, after that, it's basically Vanguard all day. Friday is usually Forest Friday, where I play through uh, <laughs> video games based on the Star Wars prequels. But, uh, um, I still have to, I still have to finish up, uh, what is that? I don't even remember. Galaxy Conquest, something like that. Galactic Wargrounds. Galactic Battlegrounds? I think that's it. Anyway, the Age of Empires 2 reskin and Age of Empires 4 is out. I gotta, I gotta check that out too. And Forza Horizon 5 is soon. Woo wee! And then, man, Battlefield's out, and it's just that's the fall, right? Is Ring Fit actually a good workout? Yeah, it can be. Mm -hmm. Galactic Battlegrounds. Thank you, thank you, Ruby and Gamer. Thank you for the cheer. Gamer McGee LP. Good name. All right. Thank you all very much for watching. Like I said, I'll be I'll be getting after it tomorrow. Mm, maybe maybe more on one o'clock. And I'm up pretty late now, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, gonna be gonna be zooting the doot tomorrow. And then uh, also a media tech block tomorrow night. Maybe I should maybe I should think about a theme. Anyway, have a good night, everyone. Catch you next time. Bye bye.